All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakurash, which is to say the only true name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty Shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so and never to waking up the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel and to the believers and the few sisters that watch I say shalom to you as well this is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone Miami coming back at you with the word of the week okay and as you can see on the screen that word is prayer and that was uh, you know uh, given to us by the beloved uh, brother Ira mm -hmm. Ira a young bull but um yeah you know like i said you know word of the week every brother gets a chance to uh you know you know come out with a word and you know as i said uh his word was prayer which once again extremely spiritual okay and like i, I like to tell brothers you know prayer that's you know our, our secret weapon okay and that's pretty much our uh, you know like uh uh you know basically you know, like in when you watch the uh, movie E.T., which, you know, I heard a lot of brothers say that that could be speaking about, you know, Jake, about Israel, you know. But, um, you know, when he wanted to, you know, phone home, you know, he had a makeshift phone that they had made. And then he would call home and, you know, uh, you know, make his request. Well, hey, same thing with us, man. You know, uh, prayer is, you know, basically us phoning home back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Okay, because as we know, there are angels, okay, that go back and forth. Okay, for example, Raphael, the angel Raphael, uh, when you go into the Hebrew, his name is Rapha Allah. Okay, it means uh, healing. Okay, uh, a healer of the Most High. And uh, that's his job, you know. When brother send up prayers for healing. You know, his job is to take that prayer and send it up. Send it up the chain, okay. And the good news about prayer, for those of us who believe and, you know, who are obedient to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, None of our prayers fall on deaf ears, okay? Now, they may not get answered when exactly when you want them to, but just know that they didn't fall on deaf ears. And, you know, uh, we're on, we on the Heavenly Father's time, you know? Now, it's been times where brothers have prayed, I've prayed for things, and it has happened instantly, you know? But it just shows the balance, okay? The perfect balance of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay? But no further ado, as we see here, it says prayer. From uh, uh, around the uh, 1300s, and it means earnest request, entreaty, petition. Also, the uh, the practice of praying or of communing with the Most High. Okay, prayer or communing with the Most High, and like I said, that's our secret weapon. Okay, because hey, we damn sure are in hell. Okay, we're living in hell. And uh, we catch hell, and we're troubled on all sides. We're, we're afflicted, you know, we're constantly afflicted. Uh, we die all the day long, okay? But nonetheless, we do have an out, okay? And that's through prayer and supplication. And remember, the Heavenly Father hears every last prayer, okay? If you are uh, uh, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability, okay? Because the scriptures say, if you remove your ear from hearing, the the, uh, uh, the the law of, of the Most High, then even your prayer is abomination. Okay, so that doesn't pertain to all uh, Israelites. Okay, only those who return back to the Commonwealth. Okay, and are practicing the heritage of an Israelite. Okay, meaning not just saying you're Israelite, but actually walking and talking and living in the truth. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it on that. Because when you go into the further part, it goes into prayer to a God or a object, you know, which is obviously idol worship. Okay, so we hit the point on that. We get a couple precepts. Keep it short and sweet. But uh, this is uh, uh, Psalms chapter six. Yep, Psalms chapter six. It says prayer for mercy in times of trouble. Okay, and uh, uh, yep, this is a song of our King David, right? So it says to the chief musician. On Neganoth, upon upon Shimonith, a psalm of David. Oh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, rebuke me not in thine anger, 
neither chasten me in thy in thy heart displeasure. Right. So what King David basically saying is, you know, you know, chasten me now. You know, the, don't chasten me when all hell breaks loose, because that's what's going to happen with the majority of our people. OK, because the scriptures say the, those the most high loves he chastens. OK, meaning what? When when you do something wrong, the most high jack your ass up. OK, opposed to other people in the world. They're constantly doing whatever the hell they want to do, eating what they want to do and partaking in any type of lifestyle they want to. And everything's OK. OK, but for those that the most high loves, when, when you do something that's wrong, he jack your ass up. You know, if not immediately, soon after. <laughs> OK, and that's a testimony all of us brothers have, man. OK, so King David saying, you know, don't don't chasten me when when all hell breaks loose, because ultimately that means you're going to die. OK. Verse two, it says, have mercy upon me, O Yahweh Bashim Shai, for I am weak. O Yahweh Bashim Shai, heal me, for my bones are vexed, okay? And if you're an Israelite, Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, or Haitian, you are in this condition, okay? So it'll behoove you to turn back to the Heavenly Father, you know, and, and, and give prayer and supplication. Verse three, it says, my soul is also sore vexed, but thou, O Yahweh Bashim Shai, how long? Verse 4, return, O Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. Verse 5, for in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave, who shall give thee thanks? Verse 6, I am I am weary with my groaning all the night. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears, right? And that's the state that an Israelite is supposed to be in, okay? The scriptures say uh, 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 the, uh, a wise man's heart is in the house of, of mourning, but a fool's heart is in the house of mirth, okay? And why are you a fool? Because it's nothing to be happy about here in this world, man, okay? It's death all around you. The scripture, uh, 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 we read about uh, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah, th this is the valley of the shadow of death, meaning what? Everywhere you turn, death is right around the corner. Every time you get in the car, okay, you're risking your life. You're walking down the street. You're around niggas. You're risking your life, okay? So it says, uh, and that's the state that we're in, you know? And the only help that we have is Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, verse 7. It says, my eye, my eye is consumed because of grief. It waxes old because of all mine enemies. See, verse eight, it says, depart me, De Salakia, depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Okay, and that's specifically speaking about who? Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed white man. He is the work of, uh, the mystery of iniquity that the scriptures speak about. Okay, uh, it says, depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. For Yahweh Bashim Shai have heard the voice of my weeping. Verse 9, Yahweh Bashim Shai have heard my supplication. Okay, and the word supplication is another word for prayer. It says, Yahweh Bashim Shai will receive my prayer. You see? And King David was confident of that. And we hear of multiple occasions where he prayed and, you know, had faith in Yahweh Bashim Shai delivered him from all his troubles. Okay, we actually read that in the book of Psalms that was written, uh, or, you know, or sung by King David. Okay. Uh, many are the fictions of the righteous, but the Most High delivered them out of them all. Okay? Just showing you the power of prayer. Okay, now let's see. Uh, yeah. Oh, Salak, yeah. Mm, let's see. Okay, let's look at the word um, prayer here. And it's saying talawa. Okay, I know pray, uh, pray, uh, it's uh, pray. Okay, but it's yeah, praying and simple, prayer, pray. Simple prayer, pray. Uh, 
House of Prayer, okay. Nah, they pretty. They really didn't hit it. But we we got the definition. But you get the gist of it. Okay. Basically, prayer is a supplication. Okay. Uh, so let's go back. Yeah, that's pretty much it on that. Let's get one more piece up. You know, just hitting the point. Uh, let me see. What do we want? Uh, let's go with Luke. Luke. I believe it's eighteen. Yep, Luke 18 and 1. It said, you see, parables of prayer. Okay, and this is uh this will be red letters. This was spoken by uh our Lord Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Okay. So it's uh Luke 18 and 1. It says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. Okay, and the scriptures tell us what? Pray without ceasing. Why? Because like I mentioned, this is our secret weapon. This is our connection to the Heavenly Father, our direct connect. And that's what benefit we have that the world doesn't. Okay? And and, and neither do they want it, you know? Because this is, like I said, you can't just do what the hell you want to do and pray to God and think everything is cool. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay? It's just like a father with his child. If your child is disgruntled and disobedient, not doing what the hell you tell them, okay? You're going to Hey, you're going to treat them like how the Most High treated us. The Most High turned his back on us as a people. What do you think the transatlantic slave trade was about? Okay. What do you think about, uh, uh, what do you think all the poison in the water and the food that we eat? Okay. Our women being against us, uh, diseases. What do you think all that is about? That's punishment from the Heavenly Father. You see? But uh, this is Luke 18 and 1. It says, and he spake a parable unto, unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Right. And I heard a beautiful, beautiful phrase from the beloved brother, uh, uh, Elder, uh, uh, Elder Yata Zak from GMS Dallas. And he said, uh, uh, pray before panic. Okay. Pray before panic. And, hey, that's key, man, because the times we're coming into, the times that we're coming into, man, if, you know, you... you you're going to be put in certain situations, man, and we can't panic, man, okay? And then certain times are coming to where if, you know, you, you make a false move, you can, you can end up getting put to death for it, man. You know, now, obviously, you know, uh, uh, the elect will be preserved one way or another, okay? But, you know, the time is now to, 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 to develop that mindset uh, of, of, of prayer and, and, and not uh, being hasty. In the time of trouble, like we read in Sirach, the second chapter, right? Verse two, it says, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not the most high, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. Okay. And this is a parable basically of the nation of Israel because we liken them to a woman, right? Okay. And um, we're constantly giving supplication to the heavenly father to, for him to avenge us of our enemy okay and who are who who is our enemy well esau edom the self-proclaimed white man uh the all the other nations and also two-thirds of our people here in america okay our own people are our enemies right so it says verse four it says and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself uh, though I fear not the most high nor regard man verse 5 yet because this widow troubleth me I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me you see verse 6 it says and Yahweh and Salakia and Yahweh Shai okay our Lord and Yahweh Shai said hear what the unjust judge saith verse 7 and shall not the most high avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. Okay, and the answer is yes, he'll find faith on earth, and it will be with the election of the nation of Israel. But one of the reasons why he posed that question is because he constantly was getting on the 12 disciples or apostles about their lack of faith. Okay? He kept saying, oh, you faithless generation. Oh, you know. But the, the answer to that is yes, he's going to find it with the elect. Why? Because it is a gift that has been given to them by the Heavenly Father. Okay? But the point is, 
here it is. This woman was crying to a, 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 a God, a, a judge that didn't fear the Most High, and he got on her nerve. She got on his nerve, and eventually he said, "You know what? Let me let me avenge her for she weary me." Well, guess what? Our Heavenly Father doesn't get weary, and like I made mention of earlier, none of our prayers fall on deaf ears. He hears every last one of them. Okay, it's just that there's a time schedule. Okay, like the scriptures say, no man know of the day nor hour. But in the in in, uh, in the meantime, in between time, constantly send up prayers and supplication. That's why the scriptures say, pray without ceasing. Okay, and that's also the importance of prayer. Okay, and uh, when you go into the blue letter, let me see. Just for edifacio's sake, we're gonna close this thing out. Prayer, right? Let's see how many times. Oh, I deleted. Okay, showing you uh, the significance. So within the, you know, in the blue letter, it says that the word prayer is a hundred is in there a hundred and seven times. Okay, and I believe when you go into the word pray, it's in there three hundred and six times. Okay, so very, very, very imperative, brothers, to pray. And uh, obviously, I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. So with that, Kwame Asharala, Shalom.